In this section, we're going to continue talking about how you transform objects. Specifically, we're going to get into scaling your objects. So to start with, let's create a simple shape. I'm going to go to my solids menu there. Let's choose a cylinder. I'll pick my beginning point, my diameter. Again, each of these choices I'm making with a left click. And then our length, I'm just going to make it even, medium sized, like that. I'm going to go ahead and close our pullout menu there. Okay, now the scale tool is found down here. As you can see, it's scale 3D and scale 2D. Now by the diagram, this shows that if I left click, I'm scaling 3D. If I right click, I'm scaling in two dimensions. I'm going to make my top window a little larger by dragging on the center of my viewports. Okay, we'll select our cylinder. Left click. Now it's looking for an origin point. Now this can be anywhere. I'm just going to pick the middle of the shape. My reference point. Now this is going to determine how this object scales. If I choose a reference point that's really close to my origin point, it's going to scale by leaps and bounds. If I choose a point out here, I'll actually have a little more control. So let's see what that looks like. I'll pick a reference point here. Left click. Now wherever I move the mouse, this is going to change in size. I can stick along the axis here if I want for more even keel. I can make it smaller. I can move the mouse cursor past the origin point to invert. And then it's the same on the other side. So we'll go out to about here, left click. Now by right clicking, I've repeated my scale command. And so it wants the origin point again. So let's do the same, but this time I'm gonna left click right next to my origin point. So my first reference point is very close. As you can see, I'll hold control and right click here to zoom out. It's important to note you can zoom out even while your cursor is currently waiting for you to click for a tool. Holding a control button and a right click, right mouse button, will always zoom in and out, regardless of what your cursor is busy doing. So as you can see here, with my reference point so close to the origin point, this thing is growing impossibly quickly, which may make it difficult to work with. But you do have that control over how quickly you want to scale something. Now then, if I right click my scale button, that's actually a two dimensional scale. And what does that mean? Well, if I start from my top viewport here, origin point, reference point, in the top viewport, this looks just like it did a moment ago when I used the 3D scale. But as you can see from my perspective window, if you watch the wireframe, this is actually a two-dimensional scale, meaning the third dimension, the height in the perspective window of my shape, remains unchanged. If I were to go into my right viewport here and do the same, I make the diameter smaller because according to the right viewport, these are the only two angles that I can see, the height and width of the end of my cylinder, and so therefore that's what's going to be changed. There's also several other scaling options, including a one-dimensional scale here. And in my transform menu, we can also access the scaling commands, including non-uniform scale. Now, non-uniform scale is a little bit different. Basically, what non-uniform scale would mean is scaling one or two dimensions differently than the third. So technically, I've just showed you that with the two-dimensional scale. The cylinder changed size, but not in equal portions. In one dimension, the cylinder remains unchanged. I'll press Escape. So now let's try one dimensional scale here. So I'll left click that. I'll pick on my top viewport again. Now, as you can see there, all I'm changing is one dimension, in this case the length of my cylinder. 
the circles at the end, the caps, basically the diameter of the cylinder remains completely unchanged. Now what about non-uniform scale? Transform, scale, let's choose that. Again, where it's going to ask us for an origin point, but this time, notice the text up here at the top is different. X-axis scale or first reference point. Well, it's actually going to have us split this up by axis. In other words, right now I'm choosing how to scale according to my x-axis. So I'll make it a little bit larger. Zoom back in a little bit, holding control and right mouse button. Now it wants y scale. So I have control separately over each dimension. And finally, it wants a z scale. And as you can see, I don't really have access to the z scale according to the top viewport because I'm pointed right at it. So I need to move my mouse cursor to a different viewport, like the right viewport here, and again, choose how much control I want by how far away my reference point is from my origin. And there we have it, larger and smaller. So with a non-uniform scale, I'll use my shaded preview here, you can control the width, height, and depth of your shapes separately.